Hey squad, welcome back to the channel. My name is Mike and on today's episode, we dive into blood pressure. What is it, how to measure it, and why it's important. Now I'm sure that if you have been to the doctor at some point in your life, you have had your blood pressure taken. You know, the cuff goes on your arm, gives it a tight squeeze, and then spits out some rando number like 110 over 70. But what is that cuff actually measuring and why is knowing 110 over 70 actually important? This is a blood pressure cuff. It comes in a variety of sizes from large adult all the way down to infant size. The spiggle mammometer or the gauge you see on this cuff is where we pay the most attention. If you are going to auscultate or listen to a blood pressure, you'll need a stethoscope just like this one. However, you can always palpate or feel a blood pressure as well. Now let's jump over onto the computer and check out what blood pressure actually is and why it's such an important vital sign to monitor. Now guys, let's take that 110 over 70 number, okay? This is the range that we're going to be working with. And, and you'll understand range, the range concept in a few seconds. But think about our cardiovascular system, right? We have the heart, which is just a pump, okay? And then we have our arteries and our veins, which are just the pipes, right? And then we have the blood as the contents of those pipes. So when our heart is pumping fluid or blood out of it, it goes through the aorta into a, like into the aortic pipe and back into arteries to then go to the rest of the body and give that blood and nutrition to the, the body's tissues that it warrants and needs in any pipe that has fluid going in it, as the fluid moves through, we have pressure put against the sidewalls of the pipe, okay? All sidewalls will have some form of pressure put against it, some sort of force pushed against it. This force is measurable that becomes your blood pressure because this is we are measuring the blood pushing against creating the force against these arteries as it's moving through the artery okay and we're going to get into uh the whole concept of why time and place are very important in a second. So just keep those on the back burner. So as the heart contracts, it's pushing more blood out into the pipes. So it's pushing more fluid out into the pipes and it's going to increase the force pressed against these artery walls. This is what we call systole time period of systole okay and we get our systolic blood pressure number from this systole so we get our 110 okay but then the heart needs to relax it needs to be able to fill with blood to be able to pump out that new blood again but we have so much blood in our circulatory system, it can't pump it all at once. So there's still a residual amount of blood floating through our arteries as the heart is filling with blood. But this residual blood is still pushing on the sidewalls. It's just pushing at a lower force or a lower pressure. And we're going to call this time period of rest diastole. So we're going to get our diastolic blood pressure number from this force against the artery wall while the heart is resting. So this diastolic is going to be your bottom number. So your top number is your systolic, your bottom number is your diastolic. 
So when someone says, oh, 120 over 80, that's what all the books say. That is right where blood pressure should be. You're looking at your systolic and your diastolic. Okay. So those are where the numbers come from. And Khan Academy did a very interesting video on blood pressure. And that's this, this whole uh, concept over here. So we're going to say this is the Khan concept. I don't want to steal their, um, steal their idea because it was absolutely brilliant. I, I will link the video down in the description below so you guys can go watch the original. Um, but they use the graph method here to show the exact same thing I showed on the right. So over the time of one heartbeat, you have a resting pressure. That pressure of the diastolic, that re the relaxation period, there's blood flow going through the vessels, but it's not, it's still pushing, but it's not contraction. It's resting we're gonna say is at 70, but then the heart begins to contract and pump blood, and it's going to increase that pressure to about 110. And then it's going to start coming back down and start relaxing and filling with blood again, and it's going to come back down to our resting number. So in contraction, here is contraction, and here is resting you have your systolic over here and your diastolic over here so you still are at rest at 70 so you still are at 70 here and you still hit 110 over here so you're still going to get the same number it's just a different formula or visualization of how to represent this. And I think it, for some learners, that really makes sense. Where some learners will really make sense here on the right with what I did with just pipes and fluid. So now I want to go to this time and place. Okay. And what I mean by time and place is that we are measuring this specific blood pressure at a specific time and a specific place at the body. So if I draw my little stick figure guy here, okay? If we measure on the left bicep at 1400, which is, if anybody needs to know, 2 p.m., and we get 110 over 70, if we measure the right bicep then at 1410, we might get 120 over 90. Okay, because it's a different location and a different time that the heart is. We are we are meeting the cycle at a different time. Maybe the heart is is closer to contraction, is stronger in contraction at that point in time when we're measuring at that point in time or at that specific location. So when we're thinking about location and timing, we want to develop the trend. And I make this big because trend is super, super important. Okay, we want to develop the trend based on a specific place. So we're going to pick left bicep and we're going to take all of our blood pressures on the left bicep or we're going to pick the right bicep and we're going to do all of our blood pressures on the right bicep or the left wrist or the right wrist or the, or the ankles or wherever it might be that you're taking it. We want to find a consistent spot to take it. And then we want to consistently find time periods of taking it five minutes. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and this will develop a range of blood pressures. So we can see the highest systolic and the lowest diastolic. So if we get a weird number, if we've been ranging, you know, 110 over 70 to 120 over 80 or something to that nature, but then we get a crazy number like 190 over 110, we can go, is that a mistake? 
or was there a change or maybe we got 50 over 30 and we can go is that a mistake or is that a change in my patient based on the trends that I now have gathered over the course of the say five last blood pressures hopefully this demonstration makes sense to you guys and you can put this information to use in the field there will be a future skills video demonstrating the proper methods of obtaining a blood pressure for now the best thing to remember is to make sure you trend your vital signs looking for changes and to always size your cuff appropriately that's it for today's video guys thank you for watching and i will see you guys in the next video